Hello everyone. So uh, I thought of doing this video just because of uh, you know because of this coronavirus. Uh, all the class have been uh, have been stopped. So I thought of uh, you know giving a, a small brief about the GST because that is one subject where a lot of amendments happens. So my students will stick with uh, all these things because they, you know they 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 are not able to proceed further because there are a lot of amendments. Only in case of GST we have this problem. So I thought of. Doing a video on that because uh, all my schedules are being messed up uh, because you know I'm not able to go to go to classes. So you know, um, then I thought of doing a video. So here we covers only that of amendments which is applicable for May 2020 CA exams and June 2020 CMA exams. So both CA and CMA students uh, you know can uh, uh, watch this video and understand. Uh, so you know, I'm just uh, I'm going very fast because you know uh, I I cannot go in detail with all the uh, all the problems. We are, I'm not going to do any problems. I'm just discussing all, only those uh, you know uh, what we say amendments provisions. Okay. So if uh, and it's it, this is not recommendable for the students who are attending the uh, or listening to the GSC for the first time. And also, it will be helpful if you have my material with you. Okay, uh, my latest material with you. This video will be very much helpful. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to first of all, uh, you know, t tell you where all the amendments happen and what is the how to study those amendments. Okay, that is what I'm mainly going to uh, going to cover in this session. Uh, so if you find it is very uh, useful, please refer to uh, friends and etc. So anyway. So, uh, first amendments that is applicable for uh, indirect exams. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I, I forgot to mention this video is especially for the indirect students. Final students also can listen, but I've not included all the uh, provision applicable for them. So, because I'm, I'm thinking to do another video, maybe if, if it is possible. Anyway, so this basically, uh, basically, I am kind of you know uh, uh, what we say. It is mainly for uh, in the students. Okay, anyway, so uh, first amendments which I am going to discuss that have been uh, that have been brought in section seven. Section seven, all uh, we all know that is a supply. That is a charging section of these or, or uh, charging section of the GST. And uh, I am not going to deal with all these provisions under uh, section seven. Only that amendments which are brought into this section seven. That is what I am going to discuss. So everyone, please take uh, you know uh, page number. If you if you have my material with you, that is page number eleven. In that you can see uh, subsection two. Subsection two mainly covers uh, two things. That is schedule three. Schedule three we will uh, later cover in this session. And there is a schedule uh, schedule three. Uh, sorry, uh, subsection two clause B. Clause B uh, start like this, or, or it provides like, such activities undertaken by central government, state government, local authority in they engaged as public authority. So uh, already they have uh, notified some of the uh, some of the activities of the government which is the not treated as supply which is not treated as supply that is always by municipality panchayat etc that is already there and recently they have included another one one more thing in that that is uh, licensing of this uh, alcoholic liquor okay we already discussed or we already discussed uh, in the sense like you know uh, what we say. Alcohol, supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption is not supply. But the question arises whether government, you know, whether government will allow the license, okay, uh, license to supply alcoholic liquor to the dealers. So whether the uh, license fee paid to this alcoholic liquor, uh, you know, for supplying alcoholic liquor, whether it is chargeable to GST. Because uh, per se it was not uh, not covered uh, any of the exemption, any of the schedule, nothing. So they have included that services by government by way of allotment of a uh, license for uh, dealing in alcoholic liquor also covered under this uh, you know uh, subsection two. That is not supply. So you have to uh, remember one thing: all other licenses, maybe a spectrum license or all others, okay, telecom license. All those licenses issued by the government is definitely chargeable to tax. But this this license, that is license to uh, license uh, license to deal with alcoholic liquor. Okay, you can you can practically connect that. Okay, government will issue will issue a license to dealers uh, who are dealing in alcoholic. So license fee will be paid by that dealer to the government. So here the service is provided by the government by way of uh, by way of issuing the license. So the license fee received by the government is not to charge the to tax because that is not treated as supply. Okay, that is the first thing, uh, first amendment which are brought uh, brought in newly. 
Okay, I'm not going to other provision, other circulars which are already there in my material, which are already uh, discussed in the classes. I'm just discussing only the new things which have inserted into my textbook or my, my, uh, no, my book. So next one is another clarification there we should. If we all know that is, uh, for example, you have donated, for example, say for example, A, this A is donated some uh, money to uh, a charitable organization, for example, A, B, Z, a charitable institution. So. Uh, he has, uh, he has uh, donated rupees 1 lakh. So it is a practice in all the industry or all, all these charitable institutions that they will po put a poster, po poster showing this, uh, you know, uh, so and so person has donated this much amount of rupees. So, you know, it's, it's like, you know, they, they will publish a notice in the sense like they, they will uh, uh, print a flex and, you know, keep them in, the, in, uh, in front of their uh, organization or in a public place. So the, uh, the uh, department, uh, uh, previously there is a doubt that this a, uh, one lakh is paying this A to A B C a charitable organization. So uh, it was thinking that can we can we interpret it, uh, interpret this is uh, like this, okay? Because this is uh, this is an advertisement for Mr. A, right? So uh, before that it was uh, it was interpreted like this. Uh, for this advertisement, Mr. A is paying advertisement fee to A B C. Okay, is, uh, is that the correct way of interpretation? That was a that was a clarification required. So now it is clarified that any donation given to the charitable institution, where charitable institutions are publicizing, publicizing, uh, uh, you know, that name of that uh, donors, and uh, they are uh, printing some flex and keep them in front of the, you know, uh, institution, etc. Etc. Will it be amount to an advertisement? Okay, an advertisement, and whether this amount chargeable as advertisement fee and chargeable to GST? That was the question arises. But uh, recently, notification or circular number one one six bar thirty five bar two thousand nineteen. You can see my uh, new material page number page number twelve uh, in the book. Okay, final not final book in the book uh, page number uh, twelve. You can see that it is not treated as an advertisement. So this consideration. Consideration given by A cannot be treated as advertisement fee or advertisement charges. So that is another circular they have newly inserted. So you can see there. And another, uh, I'll, I'll just check it up. Or what is another new amendment uh, you know, brought in? Okay. Next one, oh, we already uh, seen that schedule 3, right? Okay. Uh, so let me try to understand. One second. So, uh, you know, uh, in case of Schedule 3 also, they have brought some uh, amendments. Let us see what is uh, what is that amendments all about. Um, see, uh, Schedule 3, all, all we know what is Schedule 3 because uh, Schedule 3 is nothing but it is, uh, it, is uh, it, it is a list of transactions, it is a list of transactions which is not treated as supply of goods or services. So, that means you know anything uh, it is a negative list negative list means anything uh, you know uh, anything given under those uh, schedule 3 is not treated as supply or services so uh, there are a lot of a lot of things we already discussed and uh, in, uh, some new services also brought into that uh, brought into that let us see what all those things have uh, okay Okay, I think uh, this is not uh, this is uh, this is not recently uh, inserted. Uh, this actually it was there in the previous uh, book also, my version also. One is merchant trading. Okay, uh, 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 what is that merchant trading? Uh, no supply goods from a place in a non-taxable territory to another place in the non-taxable territory without such goods entering to India. If you take uh, page number uh, page number twenty three, you can see that. Uh, you can see that you know, out and out surplus. That's merchant trading. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll, 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 I'll explain this you know, uh, with a simple concept or with a, with a simple example. Okay. So uh, suppose three persons are there. Okay. Uh, or, or one person. Okay. Uh, a in India. Okay. His place. Uh, his registered place in India. Okay. He went to China. Okay. This is in India, and uh, he went to China. And he is a registered person in India, okay, and he is going to China and purchases some goods from China and is directly selling that goods to a person in USA, okay. So, uh, uh, this is how it works, okay, in India, this is a merchant trading, okay, merchant trading. So, I'll tell you once again, uh, Mr. A in India, okay, he went to China for purchasing goods, okay, for purchasing goods and he is directly sending the, uh, selling this 
goods from China to USA without reaching that goods to India. Okay, so that is a merchant trade. Suppose goods from a place in a non-taxable territory to another place in a non-taxable territory without such goods entering to India. So this is not supply as per Schedule Three. Okay, this is actually a no, not a new insertion. In the last amendment, last uh, last exams, it was applicable. Anyway, so that is also a thing. Okay, next one, uh, another. Uh, and we also have inserted into number eight that is supply of warehouse goods to any person before clearance of home, home consumption. So uh, this is actually you know uh, we have already not discussed in the classes that is um, warehouse goods. Okay, uh, because in customs in customs uh, you know when a person has imported some goods he has two options. Okay, either he can take the goods directly to the home consumption. Or he can store the goods in a warehouse. Okay, so when he, uh, you know, when he uh, stored some goods in a warehouse, uh, in between he got another customer. Okay, uh, then he sold that warehouse goods to that customer. Okay, so the question arises whether that sale is treated as supply under GST. Okay, so it is clarified that it is not clarified that 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 is covered under Schedule Three. That means that is not supply. Okay. So you will be thinking then how the GST will uh, component will get, get to the government. That is happens only when the last sales. Okay. For example, A imported goods to uh, goods from the uh, USA and he kept that goods in a warehouse of uh, customs and you know A sold these goods to B in a warehouse. Again, in, in the warehouse A sold these goods to B. Then B sold goods to C. So sale by A to B is not supplied. No GST would be triggered for that transaction. But and B to C also uh, it's not supplied. Okay, B to C also not supplied. But when C is taking that goods from the uh, warehouse, he will have to he will have to uh, discharge all the GST liability. So any any sales happens in a warehouse of customs or port, it's not supplied. Especially because that is another amendments they have brought in. Okay, next one uh, it is uh, amendments is that uh, we already uh, discussed uh, section nine. Okay. Uh, you can take uh, take page number twenty seven. Okay, charging section. Okay, uh, charging section. We all all know that section nine of CGST Act talks about the charging section. Charging section simply means it it will provides which all the transaction will be chargeable to GST. So uh, the important amendments that is coming uh, nine subsection three nine, nine subsection three is uh, uh, they have listed lot of a uh, lot of kind of what we say you know. Transactions or supply services uh, on which reverse charge mechanism. Okay, I, I'm not going to in detail with RCM, so you will you will be knowing what is RCM. So they have inserted some more new entries in RCM. And also we have another RCM under Section Nine, Subsection Four. When a person, uh, you know, when a supplier is unregistered and the recipient is registered, the regis uh, the registered recipient has to pay the GST. Okay, this is Nine, Subsection Four. But then, Subsection Four has amended wide CGST Amendment Act 2018 that this is not applicable for all the registered recipient and this is not applicable for all the supplier. This is applicable only for the specified registered person and this is applicable only for the specified recipient. That we will see which all the transaction has been notified for this purpose. Okay, and uh, so uh, first of all, let us. Try to. Uh, I told you that we have mainly two RCM, nine subsection three RCM, nine subsection four RCM. The main difference between these two RCM is that nine subsection three talks about RCM supplies, or uh, where we don't have to look into whether the supplier is registered or unregistered, whether the recipient is registered or unregistered. All the services, all the uh, all the transactions mentioned herein. Uh, in that transaction, the recipient must pay the GST. Okay, that is nine subsection three. But nine subsection four, uh, you know, in order to apply nine subsection four, the combination must be this like that is uh, the supplier must be unregistered and the recipient must be registered. Okay, so that is the main difference between nine subsection three and nine subsection four. And uh, nine subsection three in uh, under nine subsection three, we have lot of services, lot of uh, transactions notified for that purpose. And uh, okay, so. Uh, we already discussed all those things, and I'm going to discuss only the amendments, new amendments which have came in. Uh, take page number thirty-three. If you have my uh, latest material, take page number thirty-three. Uh, so uh, you know, 
in that uh, we have uh, we already discussed uh, entry number 9 okay entry number 9 goes like this any service by an author artist or uh, music composer etc by way of uh, you know by way of assigning the right of their work to a producer or publisher etc in that situation the uh, the supplier is the music composer or the artist or the author etc and the recipient will be publisher producer etc so the person liable to pay gst is the recipient that is how nine uh, entry number nine are provided but you know they have inserted a new entry nine a in this situation entry number nine says that in case of author also in case of author the publisher has to pay the gst under rcm that is what nine section uh, sorry entry number nine providing but nine a provide that in case of uh, you know author in case of author and publisher uh, publisher normally publisher that the recipient have to pay the gsc uh, under rcm that is as per nine, entry number nine but as per nine a amendment nine a they have given an option to pay to the other that is a supplier on a forward charges okay on a forward charge. but for this but for this you know uh, the thing is that the other must be a registered person and he has to indicate that option and the option exercises shall not be drawn within one year okay so this nine uh, entry number nine uh, provide this only that is in case of author and publisher author is a supplier publisher will be the recipient okay entry number 9 says that recipient must pay the gst under rcm but 9a newly amended they have said that in this case that is author publisher there is an option available to the author to pay the gst on a forward charge for forward charges okay so that is a one amendment came in uh, 9 subsection 3 rcm another thing is that okay okay this actually uh, this actually uh, kind of uh, you know, uh, not a new insertion. It was inserted for the last exam, but still, uh, you know, because of this importance, I'm just, I'm just, you know, explaining this concept. Okay, business facilitator and a, a business correspondent. Okay, we have two, um, you know, uh, in the sense like you know, two people who will be uh, facilitating the functions of the bank. Especially, you know, why this business facilitator and correspondent is appointed under uh, you know uh, banking system is that. Uh, suppose you know, a bank has a rural branch, okay, in the sense like for example, suppose tour, okay, uh, suppose a bank has, uh, you know, a bank does not have a branch in tour, for example, but it has so many, uh, so many clients in, uh, in the sense like bank clients in tour, so, uh, but it is not affordable to a bank to open a branch in tour, so what they will do is that they will appoint a business facilitator or a business correspondent to serve its clients. So for this, the bank will give a consideration to the consideration this business uh, uh, facilitators or correspondent. So the here the supplier is business correspondent because they are serving the customers of the bank located in the world, right? And the recipient is bank because who uh, banks customers are serving by these business facilitators. So the question arises when a bank uh, gives a commission or whatever amount given to this business facilitators or business correspondent. Who has to pay the GST? That is the question arises. So entry number take page number 34 and entry number 12. It says that services by a business facilitator to a bank company. Listen carefully. Here only business facilitator is covered. Okay, business facilitator. So the service provider is business facilitator, and the recipient is business correspondent. Okay, sorry, uh, bank. So the recipient is banking company. So here the person liable to pay GST is the banking company. Okay, that is the one thing you have to understand. So next one, business correspondent is not covered under that. Okay, so in this business correspondent, where service providing by a business correspondent to a banking company, it is a business correspondent has to pay the GST under forward charge. The business correspondent and business facilitators have a small uh, variation that I have given the meaning in the exemption chapter. You can refer there. So anyway, so that is one thing you have to understand. Now next one, and next entry is at end number 13. Service by agent of a business correspondent to a business correspondent. Okay, so here this agent of the business uh, facilitator is not covered. Okay, here only the agent of the business correspondent is covered. So when a, a agent of a business correspondent is providing to the services to business correspondent, the supplier is agent and the recipient is business correspondent. Here the person liable to pay GST is the business correspondent under RCM. Okay, so let us summarize, summarize this. Okay, and this provision I have summarized in uh, I have summarized in the you know uh, below you can see that on the next page I have uh, summarized that anyway so when a business 
facilitator is providing to the banking company, the person liable to pay GST facilitator and the business facilitator will appoint a bank. Sorry, uh, an agent. So the service provider in this first situation is the business facilitator to the bank. And second situation, agent to the business facilitator. So the person liable to pay GST, that's another question. Uh, service by business facilitator to the banking company is covered under uh, RCM. So the person liable to pay GST is the recipient being the bank. But when an agent providing services to a business facilitator, it is not covered under RCM. So it is taxable under forward charge. So the person liable to pay GST is the agent. But when I alter this business facilitator to business correspondent, the whole situation changes. Because business service by business correspondent to a banking company is not covered under RCM. Okay, it is not covered under RCM. Therefore, the person liable to pay GST is the business correspondent under forward charge. But an agent, service by an agent to business correspondent is covered under RCM. So the person liable to pay GST is the recipient being the business correspondent. Okay, that is the one thing you have to understand. And another amendment you can see in the page number 30 only that is service provided by a friending of a motor vehicle to body corporate. Friending of a motor vehicle to a body corporate. But the thing is you have to understand in this point is that the uh, the, uh, the supplier, the supplier must be a business, sorry, body, uh, sorry, must not be a body corporate and the recipient must be a body corporate okay uh, body corporate and next one uh, is entry number 16 also we have uh, you know a new insertion that is uh, uh, you know a service of lending of securities under security lending scheme you might not be having much idea about the security lending scheme because it's, that's coming in uh, final level topic but just remember there are two parties that is a lender and a borrower and the supplier is a lender and the borrower is a recipient so the person liable to pay GST is the borrower okay now another thing you have to understand uh, nine subsection four as I told you there are actually uh, two uh, section which deals with or two subsection which deals with the uh, RCM that is nine subsection three and nine subsection four nine subsection three uh, we already discussed, I told, uh, I told the difference between 9 subsection 3 and 9 subsection 4 is that 9 subsection 3 as I told you, it is specifies some categories of services or goods in this situation, whether the supplier or the recipient register under whatever combination it is, the person liable to pay GST is the recipient, okay, no other options. But in case of 9 subsection 4, the combination must be the supplier is which is unregistered and the recipient is registered, okay. So, uh, before I am going to discuss about the 9 subsection 4, you guys have to understand one concept that is taxability of the construction services, okay. So, there is a contractor has an option to pay GST at a concessional rate, okay, concession rate being 5% or 1% percentage. But in order to get this concession rate, the uh, the only condition is that uh, is that the uh, the constructor when he purchases the material, at least eighty percentage of the material he should purchase from a registered dealer. Okay, that is the one condition they have uh, put in. So uh, I, why I told you this point is that this condition is lying with uh, the notification, the, the services or the goods notified for the purpose of 9 subsection 4. Because first item of 9 subsection 4 says that when a promoter or, or a constructor uh, you know, purchased uh, less than 80 percentage of the material from uh, registered person, he has to pay the uh, GST under RCM for the shortfall. For example, a person has purchased, okay, uh, suppose a person has purchased uh, 100, uh, 100 crores rupees of material, okay, 100 crores of rupees of material, and uh, so let's anal uh, uh, analyze this 100 crores of rupees he has purchased as material. And for example, he has purchased 90 percentage from the registered person and 10 percentage from the unregistered person. No, pro no problem for this combination because no arson would come into play. But if, suppose he has purchased only 70 percentage from the registered person and 30 percentage from the unregistered person. There is a problem arises because the contractor has to pay the RCM uh, for the shortfall. What is shortfall? Uh, what, what is sold for uh, uh, from this 80 percent, 10 percent? So, for the 10 percent, which he has to pay the GST under RCM. And another thing you can just read cement received from a promoter uh, by a promoter from an unregistered person and GST on capital goods by a promoter to be paid on RCM. These are all these are all the only three things covered under 9 subsection 4. Okay, now uh, that is all, uh, only thing. And I have to discuss actually about the uh, GST on. Uh, GTS services, but no time you know, because my 
I, my intention is to discuss only the amendments. So I'm, uh, I, um, uh, maybe I'll do another another video on this anyway. Next one, section nine. Okay, section nine talks about uh, section nine talks about the uh, no, combustion. I'm talking about the CGST act. Okay, so section nine ten talks about the uh, combustion schemes. And the combustion scheme is a scheme or an option provided to the small taxpayers, okay, uh, to pay the tax uh, at a uh, at a specified rate. They don't have to look into the rate of GST. They don't have to look into the ITZ, whatever it is. Okay? They simply have to add up the total sales made during a taxable period. Taxable period here means three months, and then multiply that tax uh, not taxable uh, uh, sales uh, or, or whatever sales in do specified rate. Specified rate is one percentage to uh, five percentage and one percent for manufacturer, uh, restaurant services and other supplies. Okay, uh, you can see in the page number um, thirty nine. Okay, and uh, another thing you have to understand is that this is not the amendment came uh, for this attempt. It was came for the previous attempt, but still I am just discussing because it's very important. Uh, the turnover limit. Uh, uh, you know, that means if a, if a person had a uh, previous year turnover more than this amount, he won't be eligible for uh, you know combustion scheme. Uh, that is actually you know uh, up to uh, other than special category state, it is up to one point five crore. And special category state has uh, classified it to do that is Assam, Himachal Pradesh, and Jammu and Kashmir. It is one point five crore. And other special category state, it is seventy five lakh. Okay, special category state analysis I have given in registration discussion, so you can. Uh, go through my uh, material if you want. Okay, fine. A uh, very important amendment came last last time was you know uh, the combustion scheme for the service provider because uh, ten subsection two talks about the condition or eligibility to obtain for the combustion scheme. Okay, eligibility to obtain for the combustion scheme and the main condition or eligibility was he should not be a service provider that means the combustion scheme of op uh, you know, option was available only for the person who engaged ex exclusively for the su uh, supplying goods but now it is amended that uh, even a service provider or the main supply is actually supplying goods uh, he can he can supply uh, services along with it but the service portion should not exceed a specified limit suppose you know you have uh, uh, that specified limit that means service portion if it is exceeding this specified limit he cannot opt for a combustion scheme and the specified limit is uh, either 10 percentage of the turnover or 5 lakh or 5 lakh whichever is higher okay this is the turnover limit now let us try to understand with an, with an example uh, for example his last year turnover goods supply of goods for example it is uh, 60 lakh and the services okay service for example 5 lakh okay total is 65 lakh so let us try to understand whether he is eligible for opt, uh, to opt for combustions what is the 10 percentage of turnover 65 six, six, uh, lakh into 10 percentage is equal to 6.5 lakh what is the uh, then 5 lakh okay 5 lakh come by these two whichever is higher 6.5 lakh what is the meaning of this 6.5 lakh is this a person cannot sell services more than this uh, more than this limit okay but in our question he uh, supply only service up to an amount of rupees 5 lakh so he is eligible for opting composition but for example this guy this person he is providing services of 10 lakh so total total is came to 70 uh, sorry uh, 60 percent uh, you know 10 is equal to 7 so let us try to understand whether he is eligible what is the uh, what is the 10 percentage of turnover it is 7 lakh yes 7 lakh or 5 lakh whichever is higher it comes to 7 lakh right so uh, this is uh, what is the meaning of the 7 lakh this uh, this uh, supplier can provide service only up to an amount of rupees 7 lakh but he is providing service of rupees 10 lakh so that means he is not eligible for composting so this is actually uh, uh, amended by not uh, sorry uh, by cgst amendment act now another relaxation so this is uh, here the scenario was the main supply is goods and with that main supply he can supply a small portion of services but that service portion should not exceed should not exceed this limit okay but another question comes when a person is exclusively supplying services or his main supply is services whether he is eligible to take the combustion scheme okay that is actually another relaxation came here that is a notification number 2 by 2019 which provides that an, a person engaged exclusively in supplying service also can opt for combustion scheme but provided his aggregate turnover in the last year should not exceed 50 lakhs 
and the rate of GST will be 6% that is 3% CGST 3% SGST okay so that is the only amendment came in uh, uh, you know, section 10 another amendment came here is that you can see in pay number pay number 42 uh, that is uh, you know uh, subsection 2 also says that a person engaged in uh, supplying or manufacturer of Demerit goods is not eligible for compost scheme. It includes ice cream, pan masala, etc. One new item is uh, uh, you know, uh, inserted that aerated waters. Aerated water is also uh, covered under these uh, you know, goods. Okay. That is only about this section trend and all things. Another discussion, uh, next discussion is that uh, exemption. Okay. Exemption section 11 uh, read with notification number uh, 12 bar 2017. Uh, uh, okay, in that situation, okay, amendments, uh, uh, you know, no. first amendment in this uh, situation is that entry number 24, okay. only amendments which I am going to discuss, no other things, okay, because I am running short of time. So, 24, uh, entry number 24, uh, we had before, uh, service by the storage of agriculture produce rice, etc. was exempted, now uh, they are providing additional exemption for storage or warehousing of cereals, pulses, fruits, nuts, vegetables, Spice, copra, sugarcane, etc. A lot of other items also included by this amendment uh, that you can just read okay, and understand. Now, uh, another amendment came in here is that, uh, okay, very important. Important in the sense like uh, service by government. We already uh, we might have studied service by government to a business entity is normally taxable, but a business entity up to a tenor of 20 or 10 lakh okay, is, was exempted. That is, what, that is how the exemption was given earlier, but we know that in registration chapter, lot of amendments happened. So uh, to give, uh, you know, uh, to give effect to that amendment, this, uh, this exemption chapter also amended. Uh, they say that service by government to business entity with an aggregate turnover up to such an amount in the preceding previous year as makes it eligible for exemption from registration under CGST Act 2017. So amendment, how does uh, how they did is they have removed that 20 or 10 lakh word from the um, uh, this exemption uh, exemption, and the, what they uh, say, say that if a government provide so if a government providing services to a business entity which is not liable for registration, that is exempted. Okay, that is how the exemption uh, works. So they have removed simply they have removed that 20 or 10 lakh word from this exemption notification. And uh, that is one, uh, one amendment happened. And another amendment is uh, uh, you can see. Um, uh, what do you say? Okay. So uh, legal services. You can uh, take page number sixty-three. Also, there are also uh, small amendments. The same amendment. What we discussed. What we discussed. The same amendment happened in uh, entry number forty-five. Also. Because there were also like this, when an advocate or an arbitral tribunal providing services to business entity up to a 10 hour of 20 or 10 lakh, which was exempted. Now that 20 or 10 lakh has been removed and in a, they have instead they have inserted a wording like that, that. Up to such an amount in the preceding previous year as makes eligible for exemption from the registered and, uh, from registration under CGST. So simply means they have removed that words 20 or 10 lakh. Oh, that is the amendment. Nothing to worry about that. Another thing, entry number 82A, they have inserted entry number 82A, service by right to admission to the events organized under FIFA under 17 women's world cups. So we know that uh, next FIFA under 17 world cup, women world cup is going to organize or conduct in India. So any ticket price will be exempted from GST, that is a notification says. And uh, okay, another, another thing they have amended is uh, or clarification of amendment clarification. Service by an unincorporated body or a non-profit organization, etc., registered, unregistered, and in that situation, we have seen that in case of housing society and all. Okay, housing society, uh, they will uh, what they will do is that from the apartment owners, uh, they will collect the uh, member uh, no, monthly subscription. Monthly subscription, uh, uh, no, collection of monthly subscription will be exempted, but it, uh, it should not exceed seven thousand five hundred. If they are collecting 7500 from a person, it was exempted, okay, uh, uh, or less than 7500, that also exempted. Now the question that I is, when a person, suppose when a person has two apartments in the same flat, okay, and he is giving a membership fee about uh, 7500 for this apartment and 7500 for, for this apartment, so total 15000 is paying monthly. So the question arises whether 
GST is payable on this amount. Now it is clarified that it is not payable because it, because it is not exceeding 7500 for a flat. Sorry, for an apartment. So you have to take it apartment wise, not a person wise, okay? So that is a new clarification that I have issued. Now, uh, another amendments in, uh, you know, uh, what we say, uh, you can see, I'm uh, giving you an error that, you know, small, small amendments. I'm not going to deal with that. And uh, NAN A, okay, you can see in okay, number 68. Uh, I, I, as I told you that, you know, FIFA under 17 women world cup are going to conduct in India. So any services to or from a FIFA okay, related to this world cup is fully exempted. Okay, that is another amendment. So uh, basically in the exemption chapter, you don't have much amendments or uh, such for this exam. Okay, so uh, that is um, only those amendments. And importantly, I've uh, I've highlighted the amendments in a blue letter, so you can just if if you if you are following my material, you can easily you know update uh, update uh, because I've given all the amendments in a blue letter, so that nothing to worry about amendments. Time of supply, no amendments, no amendments in this uh, for this exam, so you can um, don't worry about the uh, that that provision. Next one, ITC. Okay, ITC have uh, some important amendments. Okay, this is this is what uh, you know. This was the main reason why I have done a video uh, because you know many of you might not be might not have understood the provision and uh, the amendments happened in ITC. So ITC, we already discussed section 16, subsection 2. Section 16, subsection 2 says that uh, what is the, what are the conditions to take the ITC? Okay, that was talks about section 16, subsection 2. And the section 16, subsection 2, we have to read with rule 36. Okay, rule 36 involved, it was uh, it was there rule 36. But recently they have inserted inserted a new sub rule that is rule 36 sub rule 4. This is the main villain. Okay, this sub rule 4. What is uh, why I call, call, it, uh, call this as a main villain because it's practically very difficult for us to convince our clients. Okay, what is this sub rule 4 talks about? Because we are, being a man practicing and you know, this sub rule 4 is a big headache for me because I have to convince my uh, convey my uh, clients what what is this sub rule for? Because I, to, I tell you what is a kind of uh, you know. Uh, Difficulty these tax authorities made recently. Uh, suppose Mr. A, Mr. A purchased or Mr. A supplied some goods to Mr. B. Uh, for example, one lakh goods is supplied with uh, GST 18 percentage. Now B might have paid the 18, 000, 1 lakh 18,000 to A, right? So 18,000 normally how to work is that B will pay 1 lakh 18,000 and this 18,000 A should pay to the government. This is how uh, it should work. It should work. And uh, no, uh, it has reached the government. Now, Mr. A, being the supplier, he has to furnish a return called GSTR1. In this GSTR1, this person has to show, A has to show sales to Mr. B, registered, uh, both are registered, for example, okay, both are registered. So sales to Mr. B, quoting his GST number and everything. Now, so if he file the GSTN and the court in the base GSTN, it will automatically pop up in GSTR 2A. Okay, GSTR 2A is as such is not a form. It is a, you know, you cannot uh, do anything about the GSTR 2A. It is an automatic pop up, uh, uh, you know, form. So whatever your supplies are, you know, uh, supplies are showing as a sale to you, it will automatically pop up in the GSTR 2A. Okay, fine. So uh, for example, Mr. A filed the GSTR 1 showing the sales to Mr. B. In the GST 2A of Mr. B, this amount will reflect as a purchase and ITC paid. So he can take the ITC 18,000. Okay. Suppose what happens in many situations is that supply any uh, you know, uh, Mr. B might have purchased from a lot of supplies in that month. But some uh, cranky supplies, what they will do is that they will miss out to furnish, miss out to furnish the details of the uh, you know sales to Mr. B. So uh, what happens is that, for example, A has not furnished the GSTR one, or he has furnished the GSTR one, but he is missed out to missed out to mention GST number of Mr. B. So what what is the effect of that? This eighteen thousand will not come to GSTR two A of Mr. B, right? So in that situation, uh, the question arises: 
since it is not came to this yesterday to a because of the default of supplier whether b he has actually paid uh, the gst he, ha he has the invoice with him whether he is eligible for the idc that is a question arises okay so they have clarified that in this way i'll tell you how how you, sh you should uh, work about this okay uh, so uh, just take the page number uh, page number 78 there you can see the uh, rule 36 and all so <clears throat> for example a person has purchased okay in that month he has purchased 100 purchase 100 invoices okay uh, representing 10 lakh okay 10 lakh rupees is the gst amount he, actually he purchased he has the invoice with him he has paid the gst to the supplier everything uh, is pakka from his part but the uh, first case, okay, you can take the first case. The supplier has furnished only, uh, the, you know, seventy. Uh, you, you can see only, uh, you know, um, uh, eighty invoices. Okay, eighty invoices. He has actually purchased hundred invoices and paid ten lakh GST. But the supplier has paid only, uh, uh, uploaded only eighty invoices representing how much GST? It is six lakh GST. Okay, so what is the effect of this? This 6 lakh GST might have come to the GST 2A. Okay, GST 2A. This I call uh, eligible ITC. Okay, 6 lakh is eligible ITC because that is uploaded by the supplier and is reflected in the GST 2A. So, of, out of this uh, 10 lakh, this 6 lakh is eligible ITC and the recipient can take the 100% range of this ITC. So, 6 lakh is eligible. But what happened to the rest of 4 lakh? Because he has paid 10 lakh, right? From 10 lakh only, uh, for 6 lakh is uh, reflected in GST 2 a So what is not reflected? Not reflected is 4 lakh. Whether he is eligible to take ITC on this 4 lakh? That is another question. For this, they have inserted the, inserted the sub rule sub 4. They say that in respect of the amount not reflected in GST 2 a he can take a maximum amount of 20 percentage of the eligible ITC. Okay, this is a little, little confusing. It is not 20 percentage of the 4 lakh. It is not 20 percentage of the amount not reflected. It is a 20 percentage of the amount reflected. Okay, so uh, so 20 percentage of the amount reflected means what is the amount reflected? That is what is the eligible ITC? 6 lakh. So 6 lakh in 20 percent comes to 1.2 lakh. So this out of 4 lakh, what can, how much he can take? 1.2 lakh. So what is the maximum eligible ITC for that month? 7.2 lakh. So look at this. 10 lakh GST is paid to supplier, right? Because of the supplier default, okay, he is eligible to ITC of rupees only 7.2 lakh. That is a problem. Now another another second scenario you can see, uh, for example, out of these hundred invoices, uh, the supplier has uploaded 70 invoices representing 8.5 lakh. Okay, 8.5 lakh uh, uh, in, uh, GST has been uploaded by the supplier and it, it is reflected in the GST 2A. So eligible ITC, eligible ITC means what is the amount reflected in the GST 2A. What is eligible ITC? 8.5 lakh because 100% is eligible. And what is the another? Look, not reflected is, not reflected is 1.5 lakh in respect of which how much he will get? 20 percentage of the 8.5 lakh. 20 percentage of the 8.5 lakh comes to it is uh, how much? 1.7 lakh. Okay, 1.7. But he won't get 1.7 lakh because if you take 1.7 lakh, it will go beyond 10 lakh because maximum GST cannot exceed 10 lakh. So how much he will get? Only 1.5 lakh. Total comes to 10 lakh. He won't lose any ITC as such. So. This is the one biggest problem comes in you know, uh, practically because they have reduced the 20 percent to 10 percent reason recently. That is not applicable for exams. Next exam it will be applicable. So it is even worse in case of in a practical you know. Okay. This is the one amendment. If if you are not clear with this, you can text me. I'll clarify it once again. Now next one, next amendment is you know my uh, uh, next one is section 17 talks about the. Uh, you know, apportionment of credit and broker credit. I'm not going to detail in that section because that's a huge subsection and a huge section actually. Now, uh, actually, the amendment came in the last for the last attempt, but many of the many of the guys are not understood the uh, uh, you know the point. So I'm just giving a basic idea of what is amendment of uh, came in uh, section 17, subsection 5 that is block credit. Okay? Block credit means actually you have paid the GST to the government or the supplier. Uh, and supplier give pay to the government of, of course, but you know, but still the government says that you cannot take this as ITC for whatever reason. 
Okay, so uh, first of such item, okay, you can see the page number uh, 81. I've, I've given in uh, three uh, columns. Uh, first column is that blocked item. Second column is an exception to the blocked item. So first column uh, says that if you paid any GST on these items, you won't get ITC. You won't be eligible to take ITC. Column 2 says an exception to the column A. As, uh, you know, column B is an exception to the column A. That, is, that says that you will be eligible to eligible for ITC under this situation. Okay. First item you just read. First item. First blocked item is brought a vehicle for transportation of person with the seating capacity is less than or equal to 13 person okay remember carefully that is you know uh, it is only for transportation person so any gst paid on purchase of vehicle which has seating capacity of less than or third uh, less than or equal to 13 the gst such gst you cannot take it as itc that is a blog right so i for the easy sake i'm calling this as a sv okay sv uh, i i i meant uh, small vehicle don't call this small vehicle term in exams because i just for the easy sake i've just given that sv so when you pay a gst on purchase of sv that is a blocker item you want eligible for that uh, idc but when you use this sv for some supplies some supplies then you will be eligible for uh, that you can just read three uh, purposes there for making sub, uh, further supply for transport for uh, transport passages embodied training on driving etc just remember like this if you are a supplier of vehicle that is a vehicle dealer okay vehicle dealer purchasing small vehicle he will be eligible for itc a transport operator okay traveling company they are purchasing a you know a small vehicle they are also eligible for itc and the last one a driving school driving school for example they purchase a car for teaching or imparting the driving uh, to its customers that are also eligible for itc okay for easy sake we can call these three pointers happy okay so you can study like this when a uh, SV purchase it is normally blocked, but when a SV purchase for happy purpose it is eligible. Okay, that's it. Next one, same way when you purchase a vessel or aircraft, vessel and aircraft it is actually which uh, blocked item. Okay, any uh, GST paid on vessel or aircraft it is actually a blocked item, but a vessel or aircraft if it is used for SV, if it is used for SV or you know, uh, sorry, uh, not SV, or happy, happy or transportation goods it is. Eligible. So in any case, if it is if the vehicle or vessel or aircraft is used for transportation goods, that is eligible. Eligible. ITC. Next one, the, uh, you know, uh, with respect to this, general insurance services, repair and maintenance uh, relating to SV vessel aircraft. Okay, we already discussed and on purchase of uh, these SV vessel aircraft, it is actually. Is a, it is actually a blocker item. Likewise, any repair, any uh, general insurance taken on these, uh, you know, SV vessel or aircraft are also blocker item. Except when these, uh, you know, uh, SV vessel aircraft used for happy purpose. Happy purpose, then you know, any repair on that vehicle is uh, allowable. Okay. Another uh, things also that I'm not going to deal with that because that is already been discussed. That is uh, that is actually you know uh, came in the last attempt and just discussed it because of many students asking the doubt on this uh, uh, this case. That is the reason why I've just discussed that. That is not a new uh, reason amendment. That is amendment happened in the last time. Okay. That is all uh, only thing that is uh, you know uh, came in uh, section seventeen subsection five. Now, another thing is that, uh, you know, utilization of ITC. Utilization of ITC is also another area where the last time a huge amendment happened. Uh, you know, uh, before uh, amendment, it was like this. First of all, IGST, uh, IGST, ITC you have to utilize to set up the IGST uh, uh, output and uh, you know, CGST, ITC you have to utilize to set up CGST output, STST, then uh, to STST. This, this is how the order, the order was. But now it is amended that first for you know first you have to utilize the entire IGS, IGST ITC to set off IGST, CGST and SGST. Okay, so uh, first uh, the step uh, is like this: take the IGST input, then you have to set off the IGST output tax first. Then still if it has balance, then you have to utilize this for CGST or SGST in whatever combination, whatever order. That means you can utilize for the first time CGST or SGST or first time SGST then CGST. Both is uh, both is possible. Then only you have to, all the IGST ITC exhausted. Then only you can use the CGST and the SGST. Uh, you know SGST ITC, but remember CGST ITC cannot be utilized to set up SGST and SGST ITC cannot be utilized to set up the 
you know CGST vice versa. Okay, fine. Now uh, value of supply. Next discussion value of supply. Not much. Uh, not much. You know uh, amendments. Not much. Not amendments have come uh, for this attempt. Uh, okay, for in the level. Okay, fine. And uh, next one uh, is uh, next chapter is registration under GST. Okay, registration under GST also there is no much uh, amendments for this item, but uh, last time uh, you know there's, uh, there were huge uh, huge amendments. But I'm just giving you um, a summary of the amendment happened in the last attempt. That is uh, one, very importantly uh, they have uh, special category state. Okay, section 22 uh, uh, specify that special category state for, for special category state. Uh, they have another uh, limit, a okay, limit for a limit of uh, registration. So uh, before that, uh, in the registration chapter, we have mainly three sections. That is section 22, 23, and 24. 22 talks about the normal uh, situation where registration is required, and section 23 talks about the situation where registration is not required, and section 24 talks about the situation where compulsory registration is. Required. So section 22, uh, you know, section 22, uh, let's start some, uh, uh, section 22 says that, you know, in, uh, in case of other than special category state, there is a limit and in case of special category state, always the limit is standard, always the limit is standard. So the question comes, what are the special category state? Because Indian constitution also specify a lot of uh, special category state. But as per section 22, only four state is special category state that is Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura. Okay, this is the important things you have to remember as for the purpose of section 22. Only these four states are special category state that is Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura. Okay, now no other special category states. And uh, next one is that. Uh, so, uh, you know, another thing you have to understand here is that the 10 hour limit is totally, totally, uh, they have shuffled and, you know, uh, for, for these, for these purpose, you have to understand there is a table, there is a table given in page number, page number, you know, 98. So, please take the page number 98 and there is a, there is a table I have given, this is actually borrowed from ICI material, so, you know, uh, the whole India, they have classified into three, that is other than special category state, and in case of special category state ask now uh, you have to understand this other than special category state means for example Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and uh, you know, uh, Andhra Pradesh etc and then uh, unit territories like Delhi etc all, all those coming under this first category it says that if you are a supplier of exclusive supplier of goods no there should not be even a minimal or nominal amount of uh, services exclusive goods okay then the limit will be uh, 40 lakh and uh, if you are supplying goods, uh, sorry, services or goods plus services, the limit will be 20 lakh, okay. And uh, uh, but you have to remember Telangana and uh, Puducherry, these two, uh, you know, uh, uh, these two places, uh, it, uh, there is no, uh, there is no concept of 40 lakh. For all the goods or for all the services, the limit is 20 lakh, okay. Next one, as per section 22, uh, that is uh, special category state or for all the things, whether it, whether you are exclusively supplier goods, whether you are services provider, all the situation, the limit will be 10 lakh. And in case of uh, other special category state, Jammu and Kashmir, Assam, Himadhi Pradesh, for these three states, uh, you know, uh, for these three places, uh, you know, uh, if you have engaged exclusively in supply of goods, it will be 40 lakh and uh, otherwise it will be 20 lakh, okay. So all other special category state, it will be uh, 20 lakh. Now another thing you have to understand that if a person making supply from both special category state and other normal state, the limit, overall limit will be reduced to 10 lakh. Okay. So remember special category state here means only for the state. Okay. Don't, uh, don't be confused. Actually, I'm planning to do a uh, separate video on this registration because a lot of, a lot of twists and turns have to discuss under this because a lot of points we have to discuss actually. But anyway, just understand this table clearly. Okay, there is no amendment, much amendment in section 23 or 24. Just uh, stick on to you know uh, your uh, uh, idea which you already have. No other, no other amendments happened in that. Okay, and another small amendment uh, is this um, in case of uh, registration procedure. Uh, before it was, uh, you know, when you were applying for registration itself, you have to provide the bank details. Okay, you have to, you had to provide the bank details. Um, now it is little uh, amended. You can take, you can see in the page number one zero two, rule ten eight provides that bank details. You can take, you can, you don't have to provide immediately on the time of registration itself. You can provide these bank details after the registration, but not. Uh, it, it will be forty five days from the. 
uh, grant of registration, not later than 45 days of notice or uh, due date of filing of return under Section 31, which was earlier. So, simple simply means uh, it is not necessary now to provide the bank details at the time of registration itself. It may be provided even after. Okay, there is small uh, amendment in the registration process, and there is an, another clarification issue in uh, cancellation. Okay. Uh, because uh, you know, if you apply for cancellation, immediately your registration will get suspended. So it was uh, the, the the section provides that when the when you uh, when your registration is suspended, you cannot make any taxable supplies. But now then everyone uh, was confused. Okay, how they can stop the supply of goods because uh, or supply of services. Because it's in the, uh, simply means of uh, cancel the registration does not mean that just they are stopping their business. They, are, they will continue their business and then how can government says that they cannot make a taxable supply. Now it is clarified, they, uh, clarified that uh, not to make taxable supply means not to stop the tax and you know, supplying goods and services. It means don't issue the tax invoice during the pendency of suspension. Uh, you know, uh, so don't issue a taxable invoice and don't issue a tax invoice and don't uh, collect the tax from the customers. That is they have clarified and it does not mean that you have to stop your uh, what we say supply okay and uh, next chapter is uh, you know what we say ta tax was a bit more etc no much amendments uh, it's a less important chapter also not much amendments next one it is uh, you know next chapter uh, what is it payment of GST payment of taxes section 49 no amendments but it's an important chapter okay, but no amendment uh, happened in that section anyway now another so uh, don't worry about that Next one, return, uh, returns under GST. Returns under GST also, there is no much amendments happened. There is no form, they, they, don't, they have not changed any form. Uh, nothing uh, nothing happened. But the thing is that, you know, uh, the due date of the return, they keep on updating, keep on up, uh, amending. Okay, uh, they will be giving a relaxation for certain months. So, my sincere suggestion is that don't uh, you know, uh, don't get into those uh, you know, amended uh, due date and all. It is not that important because that due date is applicable only for that month or two months. Okay, Because after that it will get, again came to the normal uh, due date. So, what you guys have to do is that you just have to study the due date which is given under this section of rules. Okay, And all these notific uh, amended notification for the due date of the final return, please don't refer. So don't get into that uh, difficulty. Okay, simple. Make it very simple. So then the registration chapter is very easy. Okay, uh, no much amendments. Okay, so that is all about the uh, uh, amendments. All these things happened. Uh, uh, Suffice for CA, IPC students. But my CMA inder, CMA inder, because GST. Uh, with respect to GST, uh, CMA inder a little more. You know they have they have uh, one more additional chapter that is place of supply. Uh, but places of play, there is no amendments happened in the places of play, so uh, don't worry about that. Okay, these are all the basic uh, amendments. Uh, amendments. Okay, uh, but uh, you, you guys have to understand that uh, usually amended classes, I will be taking six or seven classes, full day classes. So uh, that that is the thing I have uh, I have uh, given in uh, in this half an hour or whatever it is. So uh, that uh, problem will be there because I I, I was ending like I, I was totally ending and I didn't explain much. I've uh, I've I only told you this is the so and so amendment happened. This is all, all about the amendments. So uh, definitely you know I'm planning to have my uh, you know amendment session on GST on this April April two onwards it will be on uh, you know some institute I'll, 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 I'll give you updates for that so uh, you can either attend the classes because that will be better because you know uh, six seven days will be there we will be detailed covering so uh, that's all so anyway thank you very much if if you have any you know uh, doubts you can always reach me and if you, if you found is very useful please uh, refer to your other students also because i, I know uh, all the institutes are closed uh, nowadays so they are very difficult for them to catch all the amendments especially in gst okay so uh, i will be uh, uh, i'll be coming up with another videos and all so please uh, please uh, you know subscribe to my channel and um, you know please share it to your friends Thank you very much.